Let's go ahead and take a look at the preliminary scene that's been set up before we get into some of the details of how to make this look much more like a naivete type of drawing and a little more hand-drawn. We've got a basic scene set up with our building. If we check out our layers, we have our airplane layer, a city layer, which when I disclose that, shows that we've got windows and buildings as two components. We have our stars in a particle layer. I'll go ahead and close that for the moment. We've got the moon, hills, and the background. Right now we're at time frame zero. If I go ahead and advance this one little click to the beginning, we see the airplane over here on the left-hand side of the assembly area. If I go ahead and play this animation here, and again it's only a six second animation, we see this nice gentle arc with the airplane moving over to one side. So that's just fine. Well, there's a couple little tricks here that I wanted to point out to show you how this smooth airplane motion was created before we get into the actual styling of all the elements. And the elements are rather boring. This is what it looks like when it's rendered up. It's really fast and a good method to simply go ahead and create your basic shapes in black and white, block in the composition, block in the shape, and then you can go ahead and style up some of the details later. Let me go ahead and close this now. Well, to see what's going on with the airplane, I'll highlight that layer, and then I'll turn on a feature that we haven't explored yet in the other movies. That happens to be the grid. Now the grid lines are very light and faint, and I've got them set up rather large at a value of 80. This control is right down here in the center panel. This is one of those perfect times when it's great to use the grid to see what's going on. Let me go ahead and zoom in, I guess. Well, let's, let me go all the way back to the beginning. You'll notice that all of a sudden the grid lines are true to the frame. Now again, they're light gray, kind of hard to see, and when this gets a little bit smaller, they may be harder still. But this is where I'll show you how we're playing this motion game. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this item, and you'll see there's a little blue line down here. Well, what has happened is that for the airplane layer, I took the layer center, grabbing the set origin tool over here, keyboard shortcut zero, and I pulled it way down, way below the render area. So I've done two things now. I set some keyframes at frame one, and then at the end at frame 144, which is six seconds at 24 frames a second. What I've done then is rotated the layer about the point here at the very bottom. This gives us a very smooth rotation and no funny path business or straight lines that has an object turning on it. It gives us a real sophisticated motion easily. We'll advance this one frame the grid lines turn to match and now when we simply drag through this we get the entire layer shifting over to the right and rotating about the axis which is down below or the origin. So that's how that motion comes into play. Let me go ahead and set this back to the very start. I'll zoom in to our shapes or our work area here and now we'll simply begin building out some of the styles. We could go in and in cases of like the mountains and the sky background, we're not going to make special styles for those. We're simply going to go ahead and pop in and change those elements. However, for common things like the windows, the sides of the building, if we want to have two tones of side, which we do here, or the windows on the airplane, we simply want to use a style there because then we can change it globally quickly. In this case, the client is not quite sure what they want when they're taking a look at it, so they'll want to see it several ways. Working with styles makes it just a snap to do multiple renders and have them say, yeah, I like the third one. I like the way the yellow looks in that. So let's look at setting up some styles. We'll be revisiting that, but now we're going to also implement some layer effects and some special brush effects that we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead and create a style for the right sides of the building. This will be the darker side over here. Then we'll have a lighter side. So I'll come up to Styles. And actually I'm going to create New. And this is a way to cheat a little bit. It's just like working with an Actions palette. I'm going to call this Default Black and White. And choose OK. If something goes wild and I simply want to reset a style or make it look like it's the way it is when it starts just for my own sanity, I've got a baseline to come in here and do that with. Let's come up now and create a new style. We'll call this building right. 
This lets me know that this will be the color applied to the shapes over here on the right hand side for what I'll be working with. Let's go ahead and choose a different color. I'm going to pick something in the bluer range, but not super saturated. And I want it darker and then I'll have the faces lighter. Actually, I may be changing my mind a little bit. I may make that lighter and then make the face of the building darker. I'll choose OK. For line color, I want a darker line color. I'll select that. We'll come back to blue. And I may actually want this lighter as well. If we don't like it, we can come back in and change it. But now what I'll do is turn off line width. And I'm going to add a brush. Of the brushes we have, I want something with a little bit of a hard edge. So I'm choosing the second one from the top up here on the left. This gives us a nice thick and thin capability. So if we have a variable line width, which we will before we're done with this, we can get some nice thick and thin, but with irregular edges on this. I'll select OK. So this now is our building right. I'm going to copy everything, create a new style, but name this building, let me get that right, building front. I'll go ahead and paste this in and we'll get the same thing for the line weight. So we've got consistency with that. The brush, we've got consistency with that. And now we can make the front of this a little bit darker. That's how easy it is to start setting up some of the styles we'll be working with as we go through this movie.